So here we are. Welcome to the SCA. My name is Giovanna Adamari. I am the Society Chatelaine. I've been for a year and a half, and it looks like I will be on for another year and a half. So here I am about halfway. So <laughs> for those of you, if you are newcomers, which we'll, we'll be talking about in just a minute, the, the Chatelaine, or sometimes you'll hear the hospitaler, <coughs> that is the newcomer officer. So that is the officer of a group or a kingdom, which we'll talk about too, um, that will hopefully help you learn more about the SCA and find ways to be able to become active and participate. Who am I? Um, I am the society chatelaine, like I said, but I'm also actually currently the mid-realm chatelaine, the kingdom of the mid-realm. So I report to myself, it's kind of fun and easy. I just tell myself she did a pretty good job. And then I go, yeah, okay, I guess. We'll keep her on for right now. So that makes it fun. But I'm only on for about another month. And then uh, Shona, who's here, right? She can wave her hand. She will be stepping up as the, the Mid-Realm Kingdom Chatelaine Newcomer Officer. But what I want to know, like, really quick, and this is what I mean, like, about a little, little bit of back and forth between us. Who do we have here tonight that is a newcomer to the SCA? Would you be willing, if you're willing to, you don't have to, don't feel like you have to, but if you're willing to, will you um, unmute yourself and just, you know, just say like how long you've been in the SCA and maybe how you found out about the SCA and what you're kind of interested in? Just like a really short, so I'm going to write a couple of notes. That way I can hopefully touch on those things during the presentation. And it's okay if you don't want to, that's, I will just, I will just keep going forward. I'm, I'm happy to pipe in. Can you hear me? Okay? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I'm Marissa. Uh, I'm not a brand new newcomer to the SCA. Um, I, I have attended events many years ago with friends um, and I'm now just kind of getting getting back into it on, on my own. Uh, I'm in the East Kingdom uh, in uh, Mountain Freehold, so up in Vermont. Yeah. So I'm very, very excited that uh, I came across something online to, uh, to be able to do this with you all. So thank you. What, uh, Marissa, what kind of things are you interested in? Um, I enjoy cooking, mm -hmm. so I was looking at incorporating that into my persona, sure. um, especially since at various events, I know like that's an area where um, there's always help that's needed to, to prepare feasts and get that stuff ready. So I figured that'd be a fun way to incorporate my hobbies into my other hobbies Definitely, Definitely um, yeah. and sort of expand out and, and also help contribute to the local groups. Sure. Great. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else, is any other person here, a newcomer that just wants to, you know, kind of just say who you are? Again, no pressure to do so. My name's Heather Simmons. I joined about a year ago and it's been so long. I can't remember the name of my local group. It's the one in Athens, Georgia. I want to say Bryn Mawr, but that's wrong. But I'm interested in embroidery and sewing. Okay, great. Well, that's awesome. Thank you, Heather. It looks like we have a hand raised from Robert. Yep, that's me. <laughs> hey. Joined maybe a year ago, November. He went to a handful of events with a, got involved with, um, in, interested and involved through, uh, through my girlfriend. And not, you know, I've been to a few events, but not very many. And just some local, um, local uh, Zoom meetings and some baronial, uh, some kingdom Zoom meetings here in, uh, the Barony of Thescore here in Ethelmark. Oh, okay, great. Wow, we've got a lot of people from all over. This awesome. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Well, uh, what kind of things are you interested in doing, Robert? Was toying with the idea of starting a little, um, learning a little calligraphy, maybe some, yeah. doing some illuminate, I don't know, doing some illuminate, sure. maybe pursuing that a little. And I was interested right before the whole pandemic uh, hit of maybe doing some uh, fencing. Awesome, fantastic. Great. Well, thank you for joining us, Robert. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Anyone else? Hi. Hi. Yes. Real quick. So me and my sister are both kind of nerds about the medieval ages. We don't really know anything about the SCA. Yes. <laughs> well, kind of. I mean, I've done a lot of research okay. online. That's why we have this background and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm personally interested in everything. So like whatever you have to give, I'll soak it up. Great. Hopefully. Awesome. And awesome. I don't know. I don't know. She also was saying she was interested in the fighting portion of it and well, strategy and tactics and stuff, but I'm more interested in like the <laughs> sciences and medicine. So great. I also love calligraphy. So I mean like 
<laughs> Fantastic. In and out, in and out. Great. Well, thank you. I'm really glad to join you. And that's good. To, that's good to know. I'm trying to like gauge really quickly, like how basic to start. And so some people I know who are in this, who are in this chat are older timers like me who've been in the SCA for decades now. So a lot of this will be repeat, but that's okay. Cause you may, you know, you may learn something new or may be able to, if you're, especially if you're a newcomer officer to be able to utilize this. All right. Well, I'm going to move ahead a little bit just uh, to keep going. Because I've got two little videos I'm going to show you, um, which especially if you're newcomers, I find for me, you can talk about the SCA, but there's nothing like video to show you what the SCA is about, because the SCA is a very visual, um, hands-on experience. So it's hard for me to sort of explain to you. It's better for me to show you. So we'll get there in just a second. Um, I won't you know, I don't like reading slides. So you can take a look here. There is a mission statement. We are a 501c3 educational organization, not for profit. This is the mission statement we have. The SCA um, has some an, an interesting beginning, which we'll talk about, um, but it really has turned into a very um, living, kind of a living history movement, very social organization very hands-on and about experiential participation, right? So like, instead of like the Ren Fair, which, although my husband's from Alaska, in Alaska, the SCA did do, they were the Ren Fair. So maybe that's different, but in Michigan, like the Ren Fair, you kind of go watch shows and you kind of watch the people. Here, you're the people and you get to experience it and learn by doing things. So it's a very hands-on organization. As Baron Al Alfgar said, Right, this was started by a kind of a party in a park, right? A party in a park and they needed a permit. And so they came up with a name for it. But now we have about 30,000 members across the world. Um, our society uh, is broken up into 20 kingdoms. So and, um, I'll explain that in a little bit. So don't be like, oh, what? I don't understand what that means. But there are 20 kingdoms. When I started, there were 18, when well, there are only 18 and now, now there's 20, who knows where we'll go from here, but most are in the United States, but there is some uh, in Europe, Drakenwald in Europe and Lowcock, uh, which is in Australia and New Zealand. <clears throat> inside, inside kingdoms, we'll also talk about shires, baronies, colleges, cantons. You may belong to one of those groups within a, you know, within a kingdom. Um, I have a resource page at the end of the presentation, which includes my email address. You can feel free if you're if you don't know your local group right now, I will help you find that and I will help you find your local newcomer officer as well. And that's part of my job. So I put in some pretty pictures because, again, I, to me, the SCA is a very beautiful um, visual uh, experience, right? So I was like, I gotta, I can't just sit here and talk. I gotta put in pictures. So um, obviously we have some archers. Uh, the picture you see on the top right hand corner is a picture from Penzik War, which is a large, huge, uh, we, uh, two week long event that takes place in Pennsylvania. Uh, obviously it didn't happen last year and it, it I think, I think it's highly unlikely it'll happen this year, but we'll see, we'll see. But it's had anywhere from 10,000 to 13,000 people at a time. Um, so many people that they get their own zip code for two weeks um, and own post office and have their own EMS and services and things like that. So bottom left-hand corner is also a picture from Penzik War. That's me uh, in the, the, the only female actually in the picture. Um, I was a territorial baroness, which means that I was in charge of uh, one of the smaller local groups um, as the, their excellencies of Tara, uh, Tara Pomera said, uh, they're the, like the cheerleaders of that group. Here's where we're gonna try to watch and they're both three minutes. So it's hopefully not too irritatingly long.
everyone able to see this okay? Yes, the feed is coming through. Okay. I actually see it too. Okay, so that's one of the ones, and that's on. Uh, you can find that on the main SCA uh, webpage. Um, there's a couple of them up there. It gives you a little overview of like a little bit of everything. I have another video. It's about three minutes long. If you don't mind, I'll play that one too. It was created by a newcomer officer or chatelaine from our local group here to really sort of highlight a variety of different things that you can find and do in the SCA. So if nobody minds. Welcome to the Society for Creative Anachronism. The SCA, as it's commonly called, is an international organization dedicated to researching and recreating the arts, skills, and traditions of pre-17th century Europe. We're the largest historical reenactment organization in the world. We have chapters all over North America, Europe, Australia, and beyond. If there's a university in your town, we're probably there too. This is Penzik War that we talked about earlier. The SCA is a fun cross between medieval history buffs, artisans, and martial artists who enjoy a good sword fight, not unlike knights in armor and the fencers of Shakespeare. Imagine battles of hundreds of people, both large and small, men and women, mixing it up as a sport. Or how about archery? Or maybe you just like hanging out with friends and topping off the day with a good medieval feast. Imagine creating historical objects from ceramics, wood, painting, or fiber arts. We do it all. If you have a modern hobby, there's probably a medieval version that fits right in. As I like to say, we learn about our history by trying to recreate it ourselves. To learn about the clothing of the period, you research it, and sew and wear it yourself. To learn about combat, you put on armor, which you may have made yourself, and learn how to fight honorably. To learn brewing, you make and sample your own wines, meads, and beers, and so on. We are more than a club, we are a society. When you join the SCA, you suddenly find yourself with new friends who have similar interests. 
And the best part of all is that it's completely up to you how much time and energy you put into it. So for someone with a tight schedule, you can literally pick and choose when to show up and how active you can afford to be. This is the Barony of Cinnabar. It's in the region of Pentamere, which you may know as Michigan, in the Kingdom of the Mid-Realm. That's Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, part of Kentucky, a nip of Iowa, and a bit of Ontario. There are 18 more kingdoms in the SCA's known world, and each is ruled by a king and queen who gain the throne by winning a crown tournament. So how can you get involved in the SCA? We welcome you to come to our local meetings, events, practices, and workshops, many of which are completely free. You can also become a member, but it's not required for general participation, although you may wish to join if you decide to be with us regularly. Members do pay lower entry fees to events, and some kingdoms require membership to participate in certain activities. Many local groups have officers called chatelaines, whose sole duty is to help new members find their way in the SCA, and we can provide you with loaner costumes for your first event. Each SCA participant remembers the day he or she started, and we are happy to help out our newcomers. To get started, visit sca.org or your local group online, contact the Chatelaine, or simply show up at a meeting, event, or practice. We look forward to meeting you. I hope those videos were a little helpful. I mean, again, for some people, I know that that is you know, you've, you've lived this experience, but I think it's really important to show videos um, to people, especially, you know, if you're brand new or especially certainly right now, people have come in like someone, I think it was Robert said he just came in in November. Well, you probably didn't have a lot of time before we entered into quarantine to be able to experience uh, these in-person events. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a picture of all the different activities that you can find at an event. Here's a couple of pictures from, I, I think most of them are from Penzik. Again, I'm from the mid, I'm from the Midwest. So the Penzik war is our big event. Um, but so what do we do? Um, the, like the last video we watched really sort of said, what, well, what is it you want to do? Because if there's something that you enjoy doing in the modern sense, there's probably some equivalent that you'll find in the SCA. Um, there's a list of things to do. And we said, a couple of people had said that they were interested in calligraphy and illumination. That's definitely an arts and science activity that many people enjoy. I used to do quite a bit of it myself. Um, but I mean, honestly, you there's pottery, there's banner making. Sometimes I know people who've made their own pavilions. Obviously there's costuming. Here's some of the lists I put down. Um, equestrian, not, every group necessarily has equestrian activities but there are sometimes you're able to find them within your kingdom or within your region area uh cooking feasts like we had talked about someone had said that they were interested in cooking that is definitely uh i i mean i like eating so definitely i want someone to be doing cooking <laughs> um but there are so many different activities. The SCA really has something for everyone. There's, uh, I mean, even in our own local group, there are, there are people who do beautiful work in fiber arts, do beautiful work in embroidery. My husband does armoring. Um, he is a, he's a armored combat. So there's different types, there are a couple different combat. There's rapier um, and then armored combat. There's also weapon archery and thrown weapons as well. Um, I really, the list is so long. So if you get this uh, later or want to get it, I can send you a copy of this presentation, but I really recommend you go to this website here, um, welcome.sca.org. Uh, it's a great website that's, that we kind of upkeep, you know, the Chatelaine, the Society Chatelaine, um, and the, some of the other officers keep, and it literally lists all the different activities, and you can click on all the pictures, and it'll give you a description of all the different types of things you can do within those categories. So it's a really great resource when you're kind of getting your feet wet and trying to find some things that you'd be interested in. Um, also, obviously, once we're back in person, going to events and just kind of watching people do cool stuff, you know, you're going to get an idea of kind of the things that you want to try too, right? I want to try blacksmithing. Well, 
chances are you can try blacksmithing, right? And it's not something in the average or average modern life, you can just decide, eh, it's Thursday. I wonder if I can go blacksmithing. Probably not, but in the SCA, definitely you probably can. How to get involved. Does everyone sort of have an idea of where their local, who their local group is? Or is there anybody that's not sure yet? Okay, well, if everybody has a lo local group, awesome, that's great. That's the best way, obviously, to get involved, is to get to know the people in your local group. And that includes, first and foremost, the Chatelaine, right? The newcomer officer. And that person, I kind of like, sometimes I think of us, we're like, we're like the marketers, right? Or the recruiters for a group, but we're also kind of like the fixers. Like, what do you want? I got so-and-so over here that can get you what you want, right? We're sort of about trying to put together people, um, new people, with people who already, you know, existing members who can get them uh, involved in particular activities, right? So really reach out to your Chatelaine um, and ask them, you know, hey, this is the kind of things that I'm interested in and see if they can help you find um, people who are doing those activities, right? Chatelaines also should be making sure that you know how to get group information. So get your information about what is your local group's website, what's your kingdom's website, you know, Facebook, if they're Facebook group, which most people I think at this point have, you know, what's the Facebook group for um, your local group so that you can find events and talk to people and get to know people. I think we're living in a weird time right now, but I think it's actually a kind of cool time because you can get to sort of know people um, virtually at an event. Sometimes people have the tendency to get a little overwhelmed. There's a lot to look at. There's a lot to do. And virtually, kind of slows us down a little bit and allows us to have some more conversations. So I think that's maybe kind of a silver lining of this whole situation. Um, so it'd be a great time to reach out to people and get to know them um, this way before you go to an event. And then you're like an event, you're like, well, why is that person wearing a crown? Or why is that person wearing a white belt? Or what's up with these names, which I'll talk about. But here virtually, you know, you can just sort of see people and, and, and get to know them that way, sort of socially. Definitely meetings. People are having meetings virtually. People are having courts. You know, kingdoms are having events virtually. Um, I know most local groups seem like they're still having uh, arts and science night or some sort of workshop nights like this one. You can get involved by starting to look at garb. Uh, I have a slide about garb. Uh, don't be intimidated about garb. It, it shouldn't be intimidating. Hopefully no one will intimidate you about it. It's, it, it can be it can be pretty easy, I'll explain. Um, and then membership. So if you decide you wanna get involved, you know, a little further involved, you can go to this website, buy a membership, and uh, the membership will get you a discount at events. Um, and some kingdoms have some rules about, um, you have to have a membership to do armored combat, or you have to have a membership to hold an office. Not all kingdoms have that, so you'll have to, you can either contact me afterwards and I can look that up or we can get you a hold of that particular kingdom to find out the rules. What can you expect? Well, I hopefully, I didn't put it on this list, but I hopefully you can expect to have a lot of fun because I think to, for me, like that's the most important thing is so making new social connections, getting to know awesome people and having a ton of fun, right? If you're not doing those things, then then um, let's try to help you find a way to do those things. You know, I mean, I think that that should be the point of the SCA is to enjoy yourself, have fun, get to know awesome people, and also obviously learn the crafts that you want to learn or learn about the history that you want to learn, right? I love talking about 14, 14th century funerary practices. That's my geeky weird thing. If you want to talk to me about death practices in the Middle Ages, I'm your person. I love weird history, you know, but I also love just getting together, eating feast, spending time with my friends and, and participating in events. So if you're a newcomer, one of the things that I find that most people are the most intimidated about is garb or, or costuming. You'll hear it called garb. That's what most people call it, but clothing or costuming. The idea is that people, everyone that attends an event should make an attempt at pre-17th century clothing. In the one video, it said pre-17th century Western Europe, 
that is incorrect now that's outdated. It's just pre 17th century clothing. So that might be India or Aztec, you whatever you would like. Egyptian, I'm Mayan. I know all sorts of people who do things outside of Western Europe. So it's just supposed to be an attempt of pre 17th century clothing. What that means, that's a huge interpretation, right? And it's really a wide range of things that you can choose from. So you can, if you're a, you know, a seamstress and you already know how to sew, you can sew yourself uh, some elaborate garb, that's fine. The gentleman on the left who also is wearing, a, he's got some nice boots on and pants and a very simple tea tunic and a, a tabard over that, that is also great, that's fine too. So there's no requirement that you come in and you have to have a particularly, uh, particularly styled dress you know, and I think sometimes I've, so really quick, I was at a Ren Fair and this girl was getting um, fitted for a corset and they were talking about the SCA and she goes, well, I would be in the SCA, but they're all really like hardcore about clothing and they'll look at your seams and if they're not correct, they'll kick you out. And I was like, oh, and so I walked over and I was like, oh, hi, um, I overheard you talking about this and I'm in the SCA and that's not the case, right? There are some people that are definitely interested in historical accuracy, and that's great. That's also great, but it's not everybody's thing, and it's not a requirement in the SCA, right? So what should you wear? Most people start out with some simple tunic and pants or a dress, right? You're making an attempt. You could definitely reach out to your local <laughs> chatelaine or your newcomer officer they have loner garb, usually it's called gold key, but you could just say loner garb that they can let you borrow, especially for the first couple of events. Maybe, you know, maybe you like the SCAs and for me, you don't wanna put a lot of money into buying things if, you know, you decide it's not for you, which I hope it is. If you can sew, I have linked to some simple patterns for tea tunics um, that you could you, utilize and they really are pretty simple. So if you have some basic sewing skills, you definitely could do that. You can also purchase some garb, um, especially if you're just looking for some basic things to start. A lot of times people are selling things for not very much money, right? So you can ask around your local group. Um, Facebook has some groups. There's like an SCA yard sale group or an SCA marketplace. You could ask there as well too. But events also, once we get back in person, they usually also you can buy garb at events. So it's sort of dependent which way you wanna go. But again, do not stress out about garb, right? The idea is that you come and you have fun. Really, that's what it is. As you get more involved in the SCA, you're gonna think about things like maybe persona, and I'm gonna talk about that, or your heraldry. And then maybe you know, you'll find a time period that you like and a name that goes with your time period and clothing that goes with your time period. And maybe over time, you'll start to work on having garb that's more historically accurate for that time period. And that's fantastic too. So in the SCA, my name's Giovanna Adamari, and I am a 16th century Italian from outside of Florence. That is my persona. So most people in the SCA have a persona name. They don't, have, some people write, write like novel about their persona. I, I literally, that's all I've got about my persona. She's from Florence in the 16th century because I liked the garb, I liked the clothing at that time. So that's why I picked it. But you, you can, you can pick a persona. You can do a lot of research about your persona. Someone had told me that they were interested in this when I was sort of asking questions. And you can go to the heraldry.sca.org and look at names, um, look at names that would be particularly appropriate for certain time periods and locations. Um, most groups have a herald uh, Harold is someone that's going to be um, uh, have information about what names would be appropriate or what kind of heraldry would be appropriate. Heraldry is in this picture. That's a picture of me. I look like a baby in that picture, like it's probably 20 years old. Um, but in the background, you can see the bees. That's my heraldry and my husband, his heraldry back there with the purple and green. So heraldry is sort of uh, if you were out on a field of battle, you know, on your shields or in your banners, different units might have different heraldry. So you can easily visually pick a person out, right? 
So everyone can come up with heraldry. You can register that heraldry with the College of Heralds if you want, or you don't have to. That's also not a requirement. They will help you if you want, because sometimes one of my friends picked three frogs or something, and the College of Heralds was said, well, you can keep that if you'd like, but if you but if you want to register it, it doesn't work because it's actually the devil's heraldry. So we can't register you that with that heraldry. So you can definitely, and it's a lot of fun to kind of come up with some heraldry. But again, these things are not mandatory. They're just things to have fun with and participate. Mr. Shivana, if I could. Yeah. Um, for people who don't know me, I'm Baroness Rosamond and I'm from the Barony of the Ritterick Hale, which is for everyone else, Buffalo, New York. I'm all actually also a Chatelaine. And for the people who are new, I like to tell everyone all of this information is fantastic and it's absolutely correct. And the thing with the garb and the persona and all that, for example, my persona is 13th century German. Don't feel compelled to lock yourself into wearing only a certain type of garb also. Yeah, true. Um, yeah. Because honestly, I have Italian Renaissance, I have German, I have Scottish, I have depending on the weather, if it's really hot, you're going to see me in Persian because it's much more comfortable than trying to put on velvet Italian Renaissance in 90 degree weather. So your persona is your persona. And if you want to build a story around that person, that's fantastic. And mm -hmm. you can always stay true to that persona if you choose to. But a lot of people like to branch out and experiment and wear different types of garb because it's fun. Absolutely. Yeah, Your Excellency, I totally, I, I totally agree with you. You do not ever have to feel locked in. I am I said I was a 16th century Italian, but I have a lot of Middle Eastern clothing, um, particularly because I like wearing pants. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I definitely like, I, I, sent, I call it century surfing. I century surf around whatever I feel like. So yeah, never feel like you're stuck in, and you can always, and you can change your name too. I mean, it really, it's none, none of this is ever set in stone. It's just something to, if you want to dig a little deeper, you know, um, these are resources that you can do, that you can use. Go ahead. Quick question. So what's the difference between like a heraldry and then a coat of arms? Is a coat of arms reserved for knights when they're knighted or is it just an interchangeable term? So someone, I'm not a herald, so someone might need to correct me. I think that, I'm thinking those are usually interchangeable. Like a coat of arms would be sort of the tabard that a fighter might use um when they're wearing which is their heraldry but if my, i'm okay. correct there's a herald please feel free to correct me i'm not a herald but my understanding from i was i started in the sca 28 years ago and back then we had some very active heralds in our group we still actually do but my understanding on the difference between a device and a coat of arms is you can't really call it a coat of arms until you are given an award of arms which is oh, okay the first level award you would get from the king and queen or the prince and princess depending on where you live um, up until that point you are not allowed to have a title when you get an award of arms then you are be, you're able to be called lord or lady and then your device becomes a coat of arms because you have earned it you can certainly you can design it you can have it registered you can have it all on everything you wear but you can't really call it a coat of arms until you receive that particular award. Thank you. That clears up a lot because I oh. was looking into what's it called, like the awards page for mm -hmm. my kingdom and um, and all of the SCA, and I like saw award of arms. And I was, does that mean like the heraldry coat of arms things, or does it mean this? So thank you. That was a perfect answer. Great. Um, I'm sorry if I could just uh, if I could just step. Uh, jump in for a moment here. I, I actually have served as a herald and uh, I'm more of a voice herald than anything else. I think it really depends upon your kingdom and what their preferences are. Uh, in Kalantir, generally speaking, we refer to uh, their, them as devices. Uh, oftentimes we forego the use of coat of arms, but at, I think generally speaking, the rules have been more or less the same as what was already discussed. Uh, uh, before you have any sort of a war of arms or anything like that, they are devices. And if you want to call it a coat of arms after you've received an AOA or a higher level award, then that's just fine. Like I said, it's I think it's purely kingdom preferences at this point. It's it's really semantics. That's great. Thank you. 
And it looks like uh, Giovanna accidentally got booted, so it'll be just a moment before she returns. But do we have any questions that we might be able to help her with? So I was wondering, like, uh, I don't know if this is already on the agenda for this meeting, but I was curious to know, like, whether anybody has any idea what types of activities they'll be having here on out. I don't, I'm not sure what types of activities we've already been having during the pandemic because we're so new. She knows more about this than I do. So all of this is kind of new to right. me. That might be kingdom dependent. I don't know. Actually, province area? I don't know. Um, for the time being, it is decided by our board of directors, commonly called the BOD, that there are no SCA activities, at least as far as I know, in the United States until the pandemic is under a better control. Right now, it is all virtual. Uh, I'm in Ontier, which is on the West Coast. So we've got virtual courts, there's classes, there's a kingdom type symposium that's going on that also has classes. And a lot of these, like including this one, is being recorded so that you can view them later on. I know uh, it was mentioned earlier about um, making like a tea tunic. We actually had a class on that a few weeks ago that's available on a YouTube channel. And a lot of people are doing that. They're recording classes or they're helping with recording activities so that people can have access to those during this time. And that way it's still promoting the mission of the SCA and still bringing that connectivity. You might see if your local group has virtual arts and sciences nights where it's lots, lots of arts and crafts and social time or if there's just a virtual uh, business meeting or social out. Let me try this, share my screen again and we'll keep going. Well, and so uh, uh, that was in particular, I was gonna talk to them about, you know, royalty. So they kind of understood that. I think, does everybody here know how royalty is decided and kind of what, what's the, the royalty, how that goes? Or is there anyone that needs me to tell them that? Okay. I'm gonna say side I, tag on I have that. kind of a high oh, level sense of it, but um sure some of some of the things under like king and queen like i know that that's determined yeah really like at the list but everything right. below it is where it gets into the weird area that i'm not quite sure about sure so right the kings and queens are determined by armored combat right and when they win the armored combat they become the prince and princess they spend a certain amount of time depending on kingdom it could be three months four months six months it really depends on the kingdom um, and then they're crowned the king and queen. So then you have people, dukes and duchesses, they've won and served as king and queen at least twice in the society. A count or countess has uh, won a uh, crown tournament once. Um, and then baron and baronesses are, you're going to see they're either court, a court baron or baroness, or a territorial baron and baroness. And you and I think my next slide will show you the coronets so you can see sort of some of the differences. So um, this top left hand coronet has six pearls on it, six spears, right? Not pearls in this case, but that's going to be um, a, you'll see on a, on a, this one in particular is actually a territorial baron or baronage. So they are appointed by the crown to watch over a certain, um, a certain area of land, right? And so I was one here in Michigan for a while. Um, and then they can become a court baron or baroness too. And then they'd still have, you'd still see these six, six spheres on the top of their coronets. Um, the top right hand, there's, this is from the mid realm, but that's our, um, that well now, now the people on the left are currently our king and queen, but they were our prince and princess. And they've got the silver crowns, fancy crowns in silver. Usually you're gonna mean probably a prince or a princess, right? Really fancy crowns in gold. It's good, probably gonna be, you know, a king or a queen. Um, North shield on the bottom left hand corner, that's the kings of um, North shield. Uh, it was one of the first same-sex couples um, that uh, won crown tournament and served together. And then I have a coronet in the bottom right-hand corner that is a, a duke or duchess. And you'll know, you know that because they have strawberry leaves. But I just want to let you know that these are things you'll learn in time. You know, when I was, when I first joined the essay, they were like, just kind of curtsy your bob towards people with the that have something shiny on your head and you're good. Like just, you know, there you go. And you'll learn these things in time and, and it's no big deal. But I thought I would, I'd show them to you just so that you, you could sort of see a couple of them. 
then they're beautiful pieces of artwork. The, the mid-realm crowns are so, are so gorgeous. Sometimes also people ask me about um, peerages, you know, so we talk about knights. Um, a lot of times that's what people first will ask about. What about knights in the society? How can I tell if someone's a knight? So there are different orders, patent orders, they're called in the society that appears. I put four of them here. There also is a, a peerage of royal, um, royal peerage. So people who have served as king and queen, they are considered royal peers. But these are the patent orders. So knights, um, those are people who have followed the path of combat, um, armored combat. And you'll, you'll be able to tell they'll be wearing a white belt. And they're only the only ones allowed to wear a white belt in the society. Um, they also oftentimes will wear a gold chain, but they don't have to. But in the mid-realm, like if you don't, you kind of get the side eye. The one below that, that's a laurel. These are people who have followed a path of arts and science. Um, and so this is the most distinguished award that they will be able to get in that. And they will be laurels. So here's a laurel. The upper right hand corner is a pelican. The Pelican is the highest award for service in the SCA. I, I'm a Pelican. So you uh, essentially someone who has done a great deal of service trying to help make the society a better place. Um, they might, you know, if the crown decides be a Pelican. And then the Masters of Defense is the bottom right hand um, icon. And that is for rapier combat. So that's the peerage for, um, for rapier combat. Does anyone have any questions about those? There's sometimes it's a little hard to explain. Again, if you're a real newcomer, the best way is to just kind of talk to people and ask questions. And you can, you know, you should be able to go up to these people and be like, oh, hey, I see you're a Laurel. Can you tell me what you're a Laurel in? And they will more than happily tell you what you're, <laughs> what they're a Laurel in. I don't, you know, I rarely feel like I find people who like don't want to talk about their art. So, so another thing is we were talking about like uh, jargon and lingo, and you'll hear people talk about seneschals and chatelaines and heralds and earl marshals and exchequers. These are the officers of either your local group, your regional group, or your kingdom, or your society. So in every one of those levels in the SCA, you'll find at least some of these officers. The seneschal of the group, which we have our seneschal here, the seneschal is kind of like the um, president of the group or kind of the administrative president. Um, they make sure that the, the laws and rules are being followed. Um, they often moderate the meetings. Um, but they can also serve kind of as a cheerleader and kind of getting people involved and active as well. Uh, the chatelaine, uh, the newcomer officer, that's me. Web minister, that's going to be someone who is, I mean, that's sort of maybe, but they're the ones that are going to be doing website related things, you know, and making sure that the website's up and the website's current, or if there's any technical issues related to um, computer things and publications. The Herald we talked a little bit about, they're the ones that are going to help with find, helping people research their personas or create their devices. There's also uh, oftentimes groups have social media officers now as well that will help maintain the public face of a group um, online through, um, through Facebook, or through Instagram, whatever sort of platform you're using. Earl Marshall, in a kingdom, the Earl Marshall may be the, the head person in charge of all martial activities, but then they'll have deputies for rapier, deputies for armored combat, or deputies for thrown weapons, or deputies for archery or equestrian. Um, but they're the ones that are going to be, you know, trying to make sure that the safety protocols are being followed and safety being really important. And we take safety very important. And so they're not referees. Um, they're more like safety officers, just trying to make sure everyone has the appropriate gear to make sure that they're safe on the field. Chroniclers are people who are sort of keeping a record of um, the group's activities. They sometimes put out newsletters. Sometimes these newsletters are now online and become PDFs as we sort of don't, don't use print material anymore. Like in my day, we had typewritten, you know, on a typewriter. Exchequer, that's a strange word. What that means is really the treasurer, right? It's the person that's, that's dealing with the group's finances, but it's called, it's the fancy old, the old uh, word, you know, to, for treasurer. And then you have a couple people, a couple officers that are in charge of the arts and sciences, or they might be in charge of youth activities. Um, not every group will have all of these. 
Um, and some groups might have deputies for these that are different, but this is kind of like uh, what you're gonna see the most in terms of officers. So if, if you wanna get involved, you certainly could you know, work to become one of these officers or you could become a deputy to the, one of these officers. And that's a really great way to learn the ropes um, is to become a deputy. So here I just put some more, uh, some resources, including my email address down there, which is chatelaine at sca.org. Um, and you can feel free to write me. Um, also, my name is Ann Stevenson. You can also friend me on Facebook. I'm almost always on Facebook. So um, you can always email, you know, send me a Facebook message or a friend request. And then if you have questions you want to ask, you can ask me about them at any time. So I know I'm sorry, I feel like we're running over time, but um, does anyone have any questions that they want to ask? When can we start? There you are, you came back. <laughs> oh, you, I was going to say you've started right now, like here you are, right? Do you yeah. know, uh, do you know what your local group is? So we are in the crowns lands of the kingdom of Ontir. Our closest, I'm not sure what to call them. And we missed that part. I think a shire provinces are like equal amounts away as far as like travel time goes. Gotcha. Uh -huh. I think we're close to Lewiston. Um, we were yeah, on the phone the earlier. Word. Well, with you guys. Um, <laughs> we cut off. This <laughs> uh, where the Seneschal was saying that Ontario was a great place for some reason and then Great area, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. if, you, if you find yourself geographically between a couple groups, I mean, I would really, especially right now, this is a great opportunity to kind of virtually go to some of their events, you know, to their <laughs> workshops and things like that. And then you can, and you might decide like you have, uh, this group has more people that are interested in uh, calligraphy, um, um, embroidery. And so maybe that's a better fit for you because you might be able to find more teachers there than the other mm -hmm. group, maybe all very armor combat related. Very fair points. But I think you've already done the first thing is trying to figure out where your local groups are, get online, meet people. I mean, that's, that's really, you know, I would say you're already doing it. <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> Huzzah! Exactly. <laughs> I believe you said that you're near the Shire of Acornabir. I'm probably mangling that because I only read the name and I don't know how to pronounce it. Oh yeah. Um. So we're like, the time difference is like within five minutes between the College of Lions March and the Canton of Acornabir. So have you had any contact with those newcomer officers from those groups? I've emailed the uh, Senatorial of the College of Lions March, kind of like introducing ourselves and stuff like that and yeah. haven't gotten a response. Okay, but so why don't you do this? Why don't you email me at chatelaine at sca.org? If you email me, I will get you a response. Oh, awesome, thank you. <laughs> no problem. That's my, that's my job is to make people be like, oh gosh, the society Shadowlane's writing me. I better write back. <laughs> Sometimes so, it could be that like, the sure. um, College of Lions March may have become defunct, unfortunately. And if it's a university Ooh. page, it wasn't Ooh. updated. It could be, it could be, but I can find that out for you. So just yeah. email, email me and I will figure it out and find you your groups. I promise. And any Perfect. other question, and you, then if you have other questions too, you can ask me as well. Thank you so much. Yes, of thank course. you. Yeah. Other questions? Well, I hope this, like this was, again, this was supposed to be a really broad, you know, brush to, to paint a picture of the SCA. I hope that all of you, you know, and again, I can, we can get a cop, well, we'll get a copy of this has been recorded, mm -hmm. but I can also send you my PowerPoint. All of the photos I took right off the SCA.org page because I was like, gosh, I, if this is all public, I don't want to get in trouble for copywriting photos. So they're all like already been vetted. Um, so I can send you out a copy of the PowerPoint. You can reuse that copy if you want. If you're a Chatelaine, feel free to go ahead and use that PowerPoint if you'd like, and then just update your own information into it. You know, and also if, if you're a Chatelaine too and you need more resources, you can feel free to contact me and I can do my best. I've, I've got a, you know, a huge file of different marketing materials, uh, business cards, all sorts of things. So let me know what you, what you need. And if you're a newcomer, let me know what you need and I will get you that too. Thank you. Well, I really appreciate this opportunity to come and talk to you all. I'm really sorry about my technical difficulties. So I appreciate your patience. Thank you for being available to teach this. This was fantastic and a lot of great information.
Who was interested? They're from the East and they were interested in cooking. Is she still here? Yes, Marissa. 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 <laughs> so, and this yeah. actually, this actually goes for everybody, not just Marissa. So Marissa, I don't know, like, and all of you can do this. If you go on Facebook, you can do like a, like a Facebook search for like SCA cooking groups, SCA embroidery groups. I found, a, um, I'm interested in making bass clothing from the 16th century. So I found like this group of 25 people who who probably only we only care like they were the only ones that care but like of, of a 16th century spanish and basque clothing so like if you and there's like a, a sca herbal herbal group sc i mean you can find all sorts of fantastic groups on facebook and join them and like i know there's a ton of cooking ones like so i know that like you can find all sorts of fantastic things embroidery i'm on a couple embroidery ones too that i'm like yeah, that's pretty. I can't do that. But you, you, but yeah, so I definitely recommend doing that on Facebook and that will help you sort of dig deeper into the kind of things you're looking for. There is also, just so you know, I'm making sure I have the name of it correct. Um, there is a, a Facebook group called SCA Newcomers Point. And that is a uh, group. It's got 741 members and I'm in there. And so if you're a newcomer and you have questions or just want to meet other people or ask about things, you can join that. A lot of the kingdoms also have their own newcomers point, like the mid realm does too, but you can feel free to join that one. And, you know, it's a great place to ask questions and get answers. And I, I do monitor that one. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. It is 916 for me. So it's ice cream time. Um, and so that's what I'm going to go do. <laughs> <laughs> we're all Hi, laughing everybody. behind our muted microphone <laughs> awesome well thank you so much have a great night and again feel free to contact me if you need anything thank you very much you're welcome thank you.